Hello, everyone, and we are back. Episode 2 of the Surprise Jab Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Ruger, and today we have a lot of stuff to go over. I'm currently filming this on Wednesday. I've been meaning to film this episode for some for some time. I wanted to film it Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Stuff has just been coming up. I was hoping to make a 4th of July episode, but... Things happen, and nonetheless, we are here, we are live. I hope we're sounding better. I did get a new mic, so we'll be able to sound a bit more clear, and I'm happy to dive into some things. We'll be uh, going over UFC Vegas 76. We'll be recapping the event. What is next for the fighters? We'll be introducing a little segment to end the show called Are You Loyal to the Belt? Excited for that. I'll be talking about some upcoming things in life in a second. I will go over who I am, as I didn't really cover that in the first episode, despite being the host and everything. And I saw The Sound of Freedom yesterday, and I'm going to be giving a quick movie review. So without ado, let's dive in. Starting off, we will be going over a review of UFC Vegas 76, which went down Saturday, July 1st. Obviously, we watched everything. We made our predictions. And they were okay. They were okay on predictions. Um... Overall, for the card, I felt I did pretty good on predicting what would happen, but let's dive into actually what happened. And talk about what's next for some of these fighters. Starting off in the ranked heavyweights, Alexander Romanov beat Bogoy Ivanov. Nothing special there. Guys, this is a medium-level heavyweight fight. Romanov doing enough just to stay on the UFC's roster. As far as rankings go, Bogoy stays at 15. Romanov actually going to move up to 13. So, I mean, what's next for Bogoy? I mean, he could be cut. He could face anyone from Chris Barnett to Jake Collier, any ranked, any unranked heavyweight. As for Romanov, I'm liking a Jarzinho Rosenstruck fight. I'm liking maybe the loser of Derek Lewis and Marcos or Joe De Lima. But other than that, not much to say. You did not miss anything watching this fight. And moving on to the next one. I can't believe this. The debuting Ivana Petrovic loses to Luiana Carolina by unanimous decision. Luiana controlling this fight on the feet, on the ground. Ivana just showing that she does not have the skill level yet for the UFC. Luiana getting back in the wing column after being on a two-fight losing streak. She will remain in the UFC. But as what's next, I have nothing. Nothing in particular. I mean, as far as the women's flyweight division goes, it's pretty deep. So, no need for her to get a ranked opponent. And then we dive into the fight of the night. Elvis Brenner versus Guram Kuladze. Elvis finishes him with a punch in round three. An absolute amazing fight. Guram was winning this fight without a doubt. I have no doubt in my mind. He may have been up 2-0. May have been up 1-1 winning the third round. But Elvis hits him with a punch that I believe hit him in the neck. Sadly knocks him out. And that's it. Elvis Brenner getting another win. And he did have Charles Oliveira in his corner. So it was hap- I was happy to see that. He'll move to 15-3, and three, now 2-0 and oh in the UFC. But Guru, man, just can't catch a break. Unfortunate results from over and over again. But he will be back. That's for Elvis. Fight in the night. Starting off July with a bang. All right. And then we move in to women's featherweight as Carol Rosa wins a split decision over Jan Sandoz. I did not watch this fight. I had no desire to watch this fight. And after it was all said and done, Pan Kianze now moves from 7 to 6 as Jan Santos drops to 7. Carol Rosa doesn't even pass her in the women's bantamweight ranking for some reason. All right, I. Women's featherweight and bantamweight are in desperate need of new people. All right, and when you put on fights like this, it draws in no viewers. It's very boring. But Carol Rosa getting a win. Who knows what will be next for her, but it doesn't really matter. All right, because let's dive into what was next. As Joe Henderson Brito finishes Weston Wilton. Unfortunate result for Wilson, but Joe Henderson Brito now on a three-fight win streak all round one finishes. All right, Weston going for a knee bar here or some form of leg lock, and Brito just decides, I'm just going to boink him over and over again. Is landing some solid punches to him on the ground, and that's it. That'll do it. He he knocks him out on the ground, which I think is very impressive compared to the feet as, you know, your head's just bouncing right off the canvas over and over and over. And he doesn't get performance bonus for this. He doesn't get performance bonus. There were a number of fighters who I thought should have gotten one, but we only gave out two, all right? It is what it is. It's unfortunate, but 
Happy for Joe Anderson Brito. And he called out Danny Gay. Now, I don't necessarily think you should make that fight. I think Danny Gay should fight up. I mean, he could maybe fight Bryce Mitchell. I, I like actually like Joe Anderson Brito versus Bryce Mitchell. I like that fight. All right. Let's dive into our highlight prelim because it was insane. The 55 seconds. It was on. It was insane. Renat Fakradina beats Kevin Lee. Knocks him down. Straps in a guillotine. And that'll do it. He's now on a 20-fight win streak. As for Kevin Lee, very unfortunate. But this night belongs to Renat. This night belongs to Renat. All right. He doesn't get performance balls. That annoys me so much. This was the most impressive finish on the card. I know Sean Strickland finished him in the main event. I know Benoit St. Denis got a rear naked chokehold, which we'll look at in a second. I know Terrence Brito got finished. I know Elvis Brenner got finished. But come on. Come on. He just finished Kevin Lee in 55 seconds. No one's done that to Kevin Lee in a hot minute. All right. We're not. I want to see a ranked opponent. I want to see a ranked opponent. I will be adamant about it. I'm thinking Neil Magny. I'm thinking Neil Magny versus Renat Fakhri. If I like that matchup, I'm going to stand by that matchup. That's what I'm going with. All right. Let's get into this main card. All right. Nilsutin Ruzaboev. I should have known when I saw he was 6'5 that he was going to beat Bruno Ferreira. But instead, I rocked with the undefeated Bruno Ferreira. And it bit me in the butt. I won't lie. It did. He finishes him in round one. Knocks him out cold. Knocks him out cold, too, might add. Very impressive win for him. Tough loss for Bruno. But the next fight made up for it. All right. I don't really know what's next for no suit. Middleweight has so many contenders for him. Happy to see him get a win. But Benoit St. Denis make it three straight all finishes. He beats Ismail Bonfim in round one. Perfect game plan. Body kicks. Hitting his arm. Hitting his chest. Eventually he takes him down. Straps in the submission. 12 seconds left in the round. Ismail taps. Could not be more happy. With the result. Benoit St. Denis, ladies and gentlemen. Future lightweight prospect here. He is a prospect. Who are we kidding? Future ranked lightweight here. Alright, I don't think he's going to get someone ranked next. If he could, I'd probably give him to Miras Magulov, maybe. Since he lost, but we'll see. Very impressive stuff from him. He should have gotten a performance bonus. Also, if anyone's on Verdict MMA, follow me. I predicted he would submit him in round two. Put all my XP on it. He did it in one. I still got the bonus. I placed in the top 10%. Follow my picks on Verdict. All right. Very happy for that. Um, and after four straight finishes on this card, we go into Ariane Lipsky and Melissa Gatto. I didn't even bother, guys. I didn't even bother. Melissa Gatto loses. Ariane Lipsky wins. I heard it was boring. I didn't even watch it. I have nothing to say, guys. Women's flyweight producing either a hit or a miss. This was a miss. This was a miss, guys. Let's move on. Michael Morales, undefeated, taking on Max Griffin. Struggles in round one. Max Griffin probably taking round one just, just a bit, but turns it around, wins the final two rounds in dominant fashion, and Michael Morales will now be 15. And, oh, wow. Him and Renat, man, making the jump for these welterweight contenders. And I don't know if Morales is going to get a ranked opponent, if I could give him a ranked opponent. I'd say loser of Thompson and Perhera. But Michael Morales, Miles Morales, doing this for the city. Michael Morales, very happy for him. He'll be moving up the welterweight rankings before we know it. All right, let's go into the co-main where I predicted this on our show. If you watched the first episode, it was rough. It was a rough first episode. We're getting used to this podcasting thing. But I predicted Grant Dawson would outgrapple the Miras Magulov. And by gosh darn it, Grant Dawson wrapped up 12 minutes and 24 seconds of control time on three takedowns. All right. In round three, four minutes and 32 seconds of ground control time. This was a grappler's fest from Grant Dawson. He took it to Demir, and it's very tough for Demir. I don't know if Demir's going to come back. He did come out of retirement for this fight in the first place. But as far as the lightweight rankings go, Grant Dawson is now at 10 Jalen Turner at 11, and Dan Hooker at 12 is their fight Paris a weekend. Anomaly counter remains at 13. Demir Zagulov will drop to 14, and Matt Favola now down to 15. Very happy for Grant Dawson. He called out Matus Gamrot. I don't necessarily know if that fight is going to happen, as 
him and Half Elf Eve may have a fight going down, but I would do it. I'd make Grant Dawson versus Matus Gamrot. I'd also make Grant Dawson versus the winner of Jalen Turner and Dan Hooker. I would do him versus Rafael Dos Anjos, him versus Vanil Dariush. I mean, Grant Dawson. Now number 10 in lightweight. Very happy for him. All right. For not getting a finish, I would give him her performance bonus, her grappling control. Time. Very impressive. All right. And then we move into the main event. And I knew going in, that was probably Abus in round one, or Sean Strickland would win. And Abus comes out, and he dominates round one. He wins round one. All right, very impressive stuff. 32 seven strikes to 11. Gets a takedown. And then Sean Strickland, in round two, lands 70 significant strikes, throws 140, and TKO's Abus. Four minutes and 20 seconds. Into the round. All right. I wasn't even mad. I wasn't even mad. I was happy for Sean. He's very pro-America. I love America. <sighs> Getting a win, too. And he could very be well be looking at a title shot. I kid you not. As far as the middleweight rankings go, Paulo Costa drops down to six. Sean Strickland remains at seven. Joseph Duplessis is now the solid number five. But I'm still putting Sean Strickland ahead of Jared Kanier. In the middleweight Olympics. I told you there's like a middleweight Olympics. A middleweight round robin going on to see who fights Izzy. And right now Sean Strickland is my number one fighter. He did what he needed to do. He TKO's Abus. Abus has no gas tank. I repeat. Abus has no gas tank. It was very embarrassing to see. But it's the fight game. It's how it goes. As much as I'm sad for Abus. I am happy for Sean. And now he's on a little two fight win streak. He'll be fighting up. I mean if he doesn't get... The title sh- title fight. He could fight um, maybe Marvin Vittori. I know they're kind of buddies, not really buddies. He could fight the loser this weekend. We'll see. A lot of options for Sean Strickland. He's a funny guy. He's a funny guy. As far as the rest of the rankings update, which goes down on Tuesdays, if no one was aware, I think I covered everything. I think I covered everything. Grant Dawson making the biggest jump. Oh, yes. I forgot. Sergey Pavlovich just passed Cyril Gaon in the rankings. And you may be like, okay, that's random. There have been no news of Sergey Pavlovich as of late. My theory, UFC 295, Madison Square Garden, Pavlovich versus Jones. I think they move him up to number one, boost him up a bit, and he's getting the title fight in November at Madison Square Garden. I don't know. Stipe fight could happen, but it's looking doubtful. So I'm thinking that Sergey Pavlovich is getting the nod, which I'm very happy about. I'm I'm a Pavlovich supporter. I always love seeing John Jones fight. Very happy. So yeah, that's a fight card. All right, I go three and three on picks. My unofficial, unofficial prelims picks. What I go one, two, three, four. I went four and two on the prelims. So unofficially for the whole card. Seven and five, but officially three and three. My current picks record now is 437 and 320. So we're plus 117, which I'm feeling very confident about, right? UFC 290 going down this Saturday. Absolutely huge event. I am absolutely pumped for it. We're actually going to be going somewhere to watch it. We're going to be going on a little trip. And we're actually going to have a special guest for the next podcast episode. So stay tuned for that. I'm very excited for that. But let's, now that we've wrapped up the event, gone over what's next, gone over the rankings, let me just tell you about who I am. Who is Zach Ruger? Who is the host of this podcast? Who is who is this guy I'm listening to right now? All right. So my name's Zachary Ruger. I am from Lino Lakes, Minnesota. All right, that's like, for anyone who has no idea where that's at, that's like 20 minutes, 25 minutes from Minneapolis, from the Twin Cities. Um, 20 years old, currently a marketing student at Minnesota State University of Mankato. It's where I am going to school. I stay down there in an apartment. You know, probably going to bring the podcast down there for sure. Um, UFC, as I mentioned on the last podcast, been a fan since late 2019. Um, I like doing all sorts of things, guys. I like being outside. I like seeing people. Big mini golf guy. I really like mini golf. Um, video games. You know, you can catch me on Xbox. 
um, big into uh, my faith, you know, stay in tune with my Bible, stay in tune with Jesus. Uh, no, no siblings, so can't really relate on that spectrum. Best for family, my whole family lives in Chicago, which is actually where I will be heading this weekend. That's right, we'll be going down to Chicago, Illinois. Gonna hang with my family a bit, gonna film a special episode with a surprise guest. Very excited for all of that. It's gonna be very fun. Um, and yeah, I, I started a podcast, you know, I never would have thought I actually would start this. I've gotten a mic. We're still improving the setup. I'm going to try and get an intro and an outro. Maybe even start filming myself while shooting. But yeah. Any questions about me, uh, you can DM me, at, DM me on any of my socials. Uh, I'm on Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Search up Zachary Ruger. TikTok, you might find some weird accounts. People made accounts of me that aren't real. But I do have some real accounts, so let me know. All right. Let's get into our next topic. All right. Sound of Freedom movie. All right, I'm very, very excited to talk about this movie. Sound of Freedom, starring, I don't want to mess it up, because I've been mispronouncing it a bit, Jim Caviezel. All right, he played Jesus, Passion of the Christ. He was also in The Count of Monte Cristo. Popular Hollywood actor. Stars as Tim Ballard in this movie. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Ballard. We're going to take a serious note here. This is not UFC talk. This is not sports talk. This is real world talk. Tim Ballard was part of Homeland Security and started getting into catching pedophiles. All right? But he wasn't saving children who pedophiles are after. So he quits, forms his own company. I believe it's under Project Nazarene. I don't know for sure. But he quits and he starts saving children. And he is going on these missions that are just insane. You can make a movie out of them and they made a movie out of them, which is how The Sound of Freedom came to fruition. If I could give this movie a ranking out of 10, all right? We do do decimals. We are going to do decimals on here when we rank stuff. Ranking movies, all right? 3, 2, 1, 8.9 out of 10. Ladies and gentlemen, is this the best acting you've seen in your life? It's not. It's not the greatest acting. As in the greatest of all time. It is amazing acting. It is amazing acting, all right? It is amazing storytelling because the story is real. This movie, it grips you. It hits you emotionally. The feeling I had when it ended, and it ends happy, that's the thing, but it shows some statistics. It shows the real-life raid that took place, which is what the movie is based around. There's an island scene where they do a raid. It's based off a real thing that Tim Ballard did. Jim Caviezel was playing him in the film. And seeing that it's real, seeing the real characters, I mean, I'm hit with this wave of sadness. My soul's being touched. I'm... I'm emotionally feeling this film. I want to do something. I feel anger that I haven't known about this and done something about it. This is bringing the light of child sex trafficking to the world. And is I want to donate to a charity. I want I encourage everyone to go see this film. I encourage everyone to go see this film. This is an amazing film. And I was watching podcast that Jim Caviezel was on. I was watching Tim Ballard on talk shows. Um, so many different things. I just, and seeing the film, actually experiencing it was just heart-wrenching because these children are innocent. These children are innocent. The things they do with them are despicable. We're not even going to mention them because it's disgusting. <laughs> and, you know, seeing it on the 4th of July, which is meant to celebrate America, just really brings me to light on some of the messed up stuff in the world. That's why this episode is titled Fighters and Freedom because helping one child gain their freedom is all that matters. All right. I'm going to find something to link down below eventually. I'm going to find something to donate to to support these children, to support this foundation. Tim Ballard is the hero. Jim Caviezel is one of my heroes. I mean, these guys are amazing at what they do. This movie... It's slow at times. I won't lie. It's 2 hours and 15 minutes. It can be slow at times, but it's all real. And that's what I think kept me intrigued, is that's real. Right? And there's tense scenes where you don't know how far they're going to go showing stuff. All right? And there's this one scene where you kind of see it through the iris of Jim Caviezel. And it is just... It's haunting because you know what's happening. As much as you're like, okay, I know this is a movie, you know that it actually happened. And it just, it's, 
I could go on forever. No, words cannot describe the feelings I felt while watching this. I wanted to cry. I couldn't bring myself to cry. An amazing, amazing movie. 8.9 out of 10. I'm, I'm going to rewatch this when it comes out. I'll find a way to watch it. I encourage everyone to go watch it. Sound of Freedom, ladies and gentlemen. And they're not promoting it. They're not, they're not promoting it like Indiana Jones. But guess what? It beat Indiana Jones. It's now the number one movie after the 4th of July. All right. So shout out to Angel Studios for actually putting this movie on. Paramount, Disney, they've all declined it. Sound of Freedom, ladies and gentlemen. Amazing. Amazing. Next up, we're heading back to UFC, all right? We always talk about UFC. I just feel like there's always stuff to talk about on UFC, all right? This Saturday, Treshawn Gore and Bo Nickel were, for, were supposed to start off the main card at UFC 290. Treshawn Gore pulled out, all right? And I saw Kevin Holland threw his name in, as in like, hey, I'll fight this guy. But they were like, no, no, you're not, all right? So instead, Bo Nickel will be taking on undefeated Val Woodburn. Nickname is the animal. He is undefeated seven and zero. And I saw him was training with Chris Curtis, but I'm very intrigued to see this fight play out. It's not the only fight that's had a replacement. As Jack Della Maddaleno will be taking on undefeated Josiah Harrell, who is seven and uh, only twenty five too. So two top guys being replaced, or two top level guys are getting fight replacements. But um, without doubt, we'll still be rocking with Jack Dylan Madeline and Bo Nickel. Um, next episode, I'm hoping to film Friday, we'll um, be releasing my predictions for the main card. As for the whole card, I mean, there are so many good fights. So many good fighters on UFC 290. We finally get to see Cameron Saman. He's back. Bantamweight fighter. Very entertaining. Tatsuyo Taera. This fight's actually happening at catchweight, but he is a flyweight prospect to keep your name up for. Undefeated from Japan. Love him. The rematch between Jimmy Crew and Alonzo Menfield. It's crazy they fought earlier this year. Fought to a draw. We're getting that fight back. Very excited for that. Yasmin Jagui. Or is it Jarugi? I don't know. Love this woman's fighter. Woman's strawweight. She'll be taking on Denise Gomez. I still remember her fight at UFC San Diego last year. So entertaining. So entertaining, right? Of course, Jack down that Lena. And then, to close out the prelims, we will have Robbie Lawler take on Nico Price in his retirement fight. Very sad to see. It's never never brings me joy to see a fighter retire. But as for Robbie Lawler, it's his time. It has been his time. He has, he's kind of pushed himself to the limit as far as keeping going. Now, he may be coming off of only one loss. But besides the win over Nick Diaz, his last win was in 2017 over Donald Cerrone. So definitely time for Robbie to hang it up. But I will not say no more. We'll talk about Jalen Turner and blonde Dan Hooker this Friday, along with Robert Wicker and Triscus Duplessis. Moreno and Pantoa for the third time, and Volkanovski's return against the dangerous yeah, yeah, Rod Riguez. But we are about to get into a new segment. All right. It's going to be called. Are you loyal to the belt? Maybe like Zach. What what are you referring to? What do what do you mean? Are you loyal to the belt? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at champions, specifically in the UFC to start. But who knows? We might dive into other sports, other competing things. And we're gonna see: Have you been loyal to them before they've been a champion? While they've been a champion, and even after they've been a champion. All right. And we are definitely going to be starting with Israel Adesanya. So, let me ask everyone. When did we all become fans of Israel Adesanya? All right? Everyone let me know. When, when do you think you became a fan of Israel Adesanya? What fight? I'm sure I can find a specific fight that everyone kind of became notable of him. And that was his fight against Calvin Gaslam. I'm sure he was beating Derek Bronson, Anderson Silva. That Calvin Gaston really put him on the map. Then, you know, everyone was rocking with him with Whitaker against Romero, kind of boring. It's Casa, very entertaining. But how many of you became less fans of him after the Han Blachowicz fight? We were like, okay, this guy's not unbeatable. Jan just outgrappled him, right? 
But then he's beaten Victoria, he's beaten Whitaker, he's beaten Kander. Are any of those fights entertaining? No. Out of all of them, Whitaker fight was the most entertaining. And then the Pereira fight happens. And I, l- I, I fell victim to it. It's because I actually picked Pereira to win that fight, and he did, and I was happy. But I was like, okay, I'd just been picking him to beat Kenner, to beat Whitaker, to beat Vitor, to beat Hamblovich, to beat Puck. I'd been picking Asanya the whole time. And now I pick him to lose. He does, and I'm not a fan of him anymore. Why can't I be a fan of him? And as I'm watching the Pereira fight, I find myself rooting for Adesanya. And despite picking Alex Pereira to win, Adesanya wins, and I'm cheering. I'm on my feet cheering. And suddenly, I've gone from an Alex Pereira fan to an Adesanya fan. And what's the key? What's the key thing? They're the belt holder. So, we'll bring this up with multiple champions. But I just want you to think, are you loyal to the belt? Or are you loyal to the fighter? There's a lot of sign condition. Let me know. Alright, so, um, something I was thinking about covering next episode was NBA free agency. Because we have been seeing a lot of big moves in the NBA free agency. I mean, one notable thing that I'll probably go over on the next episode with our guest is free agency. But one of the most notable free agency things has been that Damian Lillard is a free agent. I didn't see the Timberwolves or throw their name in there. I am a Minnesota fan in all forms of sports, so very happy that they're throwing their name in. But we'll we'll see what happens, honestly. We will see what happens. If it was my best guess, I think he's going to the Heat. The Heat seem to really want him. But, um, you know, we'll see. Because he could go to a number of different sites. So, let's, let's, uh, let me just take a quick look at some big moves that some teams have made. Um, yes, the Golden State Warriors trading away. Jordan Poole was a very interesting move. Resigning Draymond Green. That's huge. The Rockets landing Fred Van Fleet. That is... That just doesn't make sense to me. Poor Fred Van Fleet. The Rockets are a mess right now. Absolute mess, right? The um, Grizzlies. I saw they signed Derrick Rose. That is nuts to me. That is nuts. I'm going to definitely be bringing that up to our special guest. But Derrick Rose, back in the league. That, that, that's what I'm about. That's what I'm about. I'm a big Derrick Rose guy. I love seeing him succeed. But my top moment, actually. I'm actually good top one. And that is that. We're bringing back. We're bringing back. Guess who? Anthony Edwards. The Timberwolves' best player. I'm sorry. I have a cat jersey. All right? I'm a cat fan. But Anthony Edwards. You just... He's so good. He's so good. All right? Anthony Edwards. Welcome back to being a Timberwolf. Nas Reed also. Get back on the team, Nas. I love Nas Reed. All right? Never want to see Nas Reed go. So we will be definitely bringing that up on the next episode, diving more in-depth. So we're also going to be talking about fantasy football season. I'm a big fantasy football guy. I've been thinking of some couple things we could bring up, such as uh, who our top players are, who we are looking forward to seeing perform, but who knows. Another thing that um I just thought about that I'm very much into is the gym. I'm a very big gym guy. I go every single day. You know, I love working out, getting strong, getting aesthetic. So if uh, any gym bros out there, you want to let me know on some any secret workouts, you know, I usually just do um, chest days, back days, chest and tri days, back and by days, shoulders days, shoulder and arms days, leg days. You know, I, I know a couple couple workouts, such as like drag curls for your biceps. That's very good. If anyone wants to try that out, basically take the bar. You go you go on like a on the cable machine. You'll go down with like a straight bar kind of. You'll bring it up, squeeze the bicep, drag it down. Do that again, do that again. And I like to do drop sets. You go into curls with that then. Which I find gives you a great pump. Something I'm actually doing for this month, speaking of curls, is I'm actually doing a curls challenge. 
I usually do a challenge every month. I actually got my family in on it, me and my parents. It's called the 30-Day Arm Curl Challenge, right? On the 1st of July, we start with five curls. And by day number 30, we will be doing 75 curls a day. That is insane. I'm hoping the new mic has been sounding good. I feel like it's been picking up my audio a bit too good. I might have to work on, you know, salivating too much, maybe sneezing, coughing and stuff. But I went with the, what is it, the Fee Fine, the Infinite AMH Streaming Recording Microphone. It's by AM8. Manufacturer. Made in China. Ooh. Who are we kidding? Everything's made in China these days. All right, I think that's all I um think that's all I got. You know, I uh, had a couple of segments planned. I was looking forward to going over all this stuff, and I'm very happy I was able to. Looking very forward to doing a UFC 290 review. Take a trip to see the family. Very exciting stuff. I need to come up with more talking points. I actually had a lot, but then I burned through them too quickly. So. We're going to make our lawyers to the belt a recurring thing. We'll bring it up multiple times. We're going to try and do top five sports stories of the week. Have some more podcast guests. I'm going to do a ranking next time. I'm going to do blind rank. Let me go about some things. So very happy to talk about all of that. So yeah, let me know if you guys want any more specific things to uh, talk about on this podcast. So thank you all for listening. To episode two of the Surprise Jab Podcast. I think starting next time we're going to start ending with a motivational quote or something every time. But as for now, everyone have an amazing weekend. And God bless you all. Goodbye.